What's up sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel and it's time to give you my 2023 slash 2024 college football playoff top contender slash dark horse predictions heading into the 2023 college football season. We are just now a week away from the 2023 college football season uh, getting officially underway. We have completed all my predictions and we have completed the conference standing slash conference championship predictions as well. And we gave you a conference championship and also gave you my playoff predictions. But now it's time to give you my top contender slash dark horse predictions uh, for each and every single Power 5 conference. We did a video like this earlier in the year in the month of January where it was a way too early uh, top contender slash dark horses list. I've changed up a few things, you know, with my predictions ever since and everything. So... Um, how this video is going to work, like I said, we're going to give you top contenders from each and every single conference and then give you dark horses that have a really good shot to make the playoff as well. But um, these are your top contenders slash dark horses um, pretty much, you know, from every single Power 5 conference. And we might have an independent and also a group of five team on here as well. I could probably challenge to make the playoff this season. But let's get right into it here with my top contender slash dark horse predictions here for the 2023 slash 24 college football season. We'll start with the ACC conference. I don't see an ACC team making the playoff this year according to my predictions, but um, I have three top contenders, Clemson, Florida State, and North Carolina. Um, you're probably wondering, how is North Carolina a top contender? Well, it's because of the schedule. I mean, I think North Carolina has a pretty easy path to make it to the playoff this year. I think they're definitely a top contender in the ACC as well that can make it to the ACC championship. And also, no divisions in the ACC. So I think that's the reason why you have to include North Carolina here as the top contenders list. And then you got Clemson and Florida State. Uh, Florida State with a lot of talent coming back this year. Obviously, they've been in my top contender category ever since I um, did these earlier in the year and everything back in the month of January. And then, of course, Clemson. They have to be in this conversation every year because they're the top team in the ACC almost every year. And you look at Clemson, obviously the last couple years they haven't been able to make the playoff. It's just been inconsistent on the offensive side of the football. But I think Clemson is right there. I mean, again, no divisions in the ACC. I mean, the, all the three of these teams – um, Florida State, I think, doesn't play North Carolina in the regular season. And then, obviously, North Carolina uh, plays Clemson in the regular season. And then Clemson plays Florida State at home. I do have Clemson winning the ACC this year, you know, in the regular season. But then I do have them losing the ACC championship to Florida State in that game. And like I said, no division. So I think that's the reason why Florida State will get revenge on Clemson in the ACC championship. But these are my top contenders in the ACC, Clemson, Florida State, and North Carolina. We move on to the dark horses now, and that's Miami and NC State. Uh, Miami coming off a very disappointing season last year. Um, I think I kind of expect this team to be a lot better, but I don't think they're up there with the top contenders in the ACC. I did have this team winning the, um, you know, I did have them winning the Coastal Division last year, but that wasn't quite, you know, enough for them to make it to the ACC championship. Obviously, they had a really terrible season. Uh, Miami, though, I kind of expect them to be a lot better, but the schedule really is kind of tough for this Miami team. They do have to play Texas A&M in the non-conference, and then you obviously got the ACC schedule. Uh, the good news is they get Clemson at home this year, and I do have them winning that game. So I think Miami's going to have a turnaround year, but I just don't think they're right there with the top teams in the ACC like they were last year. And with obviously no divisions, it makes it a lot tougher for Miami to make it to that path. And then NC State here as a dark horse contender, I think we have to include them in here as, as, as a dark horse contender because I, really do, I think NC State has enough talent to where they can challenge for the top contender spot, but... I mean, this team, you know, loses a lot of, you know, talent from last year's team. Other than that, Brendan Armstrong coming in over from Virginia, reuniting with his offensive coordinator. We'll see how he does over here at NC State. If Devin Larry was still over at NC State, I would probably include um, NC State as a top contender. I really think they were not a top contender last year, but if they were bringing in Devin Larry back at quarterback this year, I would definitely include them as a top contender. But those are my dark horses, is Miami and NC State. Those are my dark horses and also my top contenders for the ACC. Moving on to the Big Ten, it stays the same here with Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State. I think these are your top contenders here in the Big Ten this upcoming season. I have Michigan going to the Big Ten championship this year and definitely winning it all in the Big Ten and definitely uh, making the college football playoff this year. But 
it won't be an easy path. It won't be an easy path because the Big Ten schedule is very tough, but I think Michigan has enough talent to where they can make it to the Big Ten championship and obviously the playoff. Ohio State, they've been you know losing to Michigan now in the last couple years. They have to go on the road and face them uh, this upcoming season. The good news is they get Penn State at home. I know a lot of people have been really high on this Penn State team. I'm also pretty high on them. I think they're going to have a pretty good season and potentially make a college football playoff this season. I think they're definitely up there in the top contender spot. I don't think they're a dark horse contender either. I think they're just right up there with Michigan and Ohio State. Talent-wise, it goes to Michigan and Ohio State, but Penn State, I think they're the underdog this year in the Big Ten East. I think they're right there with Michigan and Ohio State in talent-wise. But Michigan and Ohio State have been running the division now for the last couple years. Could this finally be Penn State's year? Could they finally run the table in the Big Ten? I just don't think that's going to happen. I think Michigan and Ohio State just have too much talent on their on both sides of the football. But Michigan, I do have them losing on the road at Penn State. They do have to play them on the road. That's one of those upset alert type games. And then Ohio State, uh, they do play Michigan on the road. I do have Michigan winning that one. But I do have Ohio State beating Penn State at home, so that's how the schedule played out to be for all three of these teams. But those are my top contenders for the Big Ten. It's all Big Ten East teams. Uh, do I see a dark horse contender here in the Big Ten? I do. I see Wisconsin here as my dark horse contender. Um, I don't have anybody else that can really challenge um, you know, those top contenders. Uh, Michigan State, if um, they had, of course, Peyton Thorne back at quarterback, um, they were going to be pretty good this year, but it turns out they're kind of, you know, as a lot of concerns for the Spartans now. If Michigan State had all them players that returned from last year's team back, um, this team could probably be at, in the dark horse category. But I think Wisconsin, with all the transfers they, that they're coming in with and also the new coaching staff with Luke Fickle, I think Wisconsin's getting a lot of hype, and I think they have what it takes to really run the table. But a lot of people are picking Wisconsin to win the Big Ten championship. Now, Iowa... Um, I probably could have put them here in the dark horse contender category, but I think Wisconsin is a better team than Iowa. I mean, I know I have Iowa winning the Big Ten championship, but that big, or actually the Big Ten West, but I mean, that division is so wide open. I mean, it's going to be very wide open, like I said, and more competitive than it was last year. But I think Wisconsin has what it takes to be a dark horse contender. I know it sounds crazy, but we've seen first-year head coaches have success in their first years. And Luke Fickle has been there before. He knows what it takes to get it done, but he hasn't coached at the Power 5 level. But that's my dark horse contender, the Big Ten, Wisconsin. And also, those are my top contenders for the Big Ten. Let's now go to the Big 12. And the Big 12, my top contenders are going to be Texas and Oklahoma. Um, I have both of these teams going to the Big 12 championship this year. I do have Texas winning the regular season matchup, and then I do have Oklahoma getting revenge in the Big 12 championship. Both of these teams heading into their last year in the Big 12. The Big 12 is going to be a very competitive conference this year. I think you got so much, many teams that have a chance to maybe win their first Big 12 championship and also teams that have won a Big 12 championship before. But... I think we can um, pretty much say that Texas and Oklahoma are your top contenders this year uh, to probably make the playoff. I mean, Texas obviously has a schedule that they have to play Alabama on the schedule. And that game is on the road, but it's a very winnable game for Texas. And then for Oklahoma, obviously the schedule is kind of tough for them. They are coming off a disappointing 6-7 and seven season. But I think Oklahoma will be much better than they were last year. And I kind of expect this game to be a lot closer than it was last year. Uh, both of these teams uh, really have a lot of talent. Uh, Texas, on the other hand, I think has more talent than Oklahoma, but I think Oklahoma is definitely right up there in the top contender category. Moving on to my dark horse contenders in the Big 12, I got TCU, Kansas State, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. So, yeah, I have a lot of dark horses here in the Big 12 just because this conference is so wide open. It's so competitive, and it's going to be really competitive this year because they have 14 teams total in the Big 12. They added four newcomers. I don't see any of those newcomers challenging for a dark horse spot, but when you look at these five teams here, or maybe four out of the five teams, you look at TCU, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and Baylor. TCU and Kansas State made the Big 12 championship last year, and then the year before, it was Oklahoma State and Baylor. Kansas State and Baylor have won both the Big 12 championships in the last couple years. Uh, Texas Tech, you're probably wondering why they're in this conversation. Well, I've been saying all offseason. I think Texas Tech can really challenge you know, for the Big 12 this season and potentially be a dark horse contender for the Big 12 championship. But also, maybe they can make a college football playoff run, but I really don't see that happening. Not saying they're going to, but... I think Texas Tech is right up there with the dark horses for the Big 12 to make the playoff. 
But this is a very competitive, you know, conference. It's going to be a very competitive conference. We'll see what happens when we get into the Big 12 this year. And again, you know, a couple weeks away till we see what the Big 12 teams look like because Week Zero starts next weekend. But moving on to the Pac-12 this time, my top contenders are Washington, USC, Utah, and Oregon. Um, all four of these teams, they stay the same. I had them in my early top contenders list in the month of January. I think it really pretty much stays the same. Washington um, returns Michael Penix at quarterback. USC returns Caleb Williams. Utah returns Cam Rising. And then Bo Nix is back at Oregon. So all four of these teams that you're seeing return their starting quarterback from last year. And all four of these teams should be pretty good on the offensive side of the football. I think the Pac-12 is going to be a very competitive conference. Like once again, like it was last year. It's been competitive now for the last couple years. Um, this could be the last year for the Pac-12 as well. I mean, you got four of these teams moving on to different conferences. And I don't have any dark horse contenders in the Pac-12. I just don't really see anybody challenging these four teams. Maybe Oregon State is an option, maybe UCLA, but maybe Washington State as well. But I just don't really see any of those teams challenging these four teams here in the Pac-12. Um, you know, Utah has won the Pac-12 for the last couple years. Maybe it could be their year to win three year years in a row. But USC and Oregon and Washington are right there. Um, in, my pre, in my predictions and everything, I had Washington taking on USC in the Pac-12 championship. And I do have USC winning the Pac-12 this year. And also going to the college football playoff. But these are definitely your top contenders here in the Pac-12. Washington, USC, Utah, and Oregon. But, you know, this, this conference is going to be just so competitive. And it will be probably the top conference, but maybe besides the Big 12 this year. But like I said, no dark horse contenders. So let's skip over now to the SEC. And my top contenders are Georgia, Alabama, and LSU. I think a lot of people are picking these three teams to be top contenders. Obviously, Georgia's won back-to-back -back national championships. Um, LSU, we saw what they did last year, challenge, you know, Alabama. And obviously, Georgia was a tough one in the SEC championship. But I think they're definitely uh, better than they were last year when they couldn't defeat Georgia. I think this will be a more competitive LSU team. Um, they do have to play Alabama on the road this year. I mean, Georgia doesn't have to play either of these teams in the regular season. I've been saying all offseason, I think Georgia has the easiest path in all of college football to make it to the college football playoff this year. And Georgia is my preseason pick to win it all this year in 2023 as well. I just think they have the easiest path to get to the college football playoff. But I think these are your top contenders here in the SEC that could possibly make it to the playoff. Um, Georgia, I think, will win there, will be there pretty easily because of their schedule. And then Alabama and LSU um, really decides who is the better team here in the West. But those are my SEC top contenders. Moving on to dark horses in the SEC, I got Tennessee and Texas A&M. Uh, Tennessee will start with them first. Uh, this team's got so much talent. Um, I think um, defensively is, like I said, what I'm concerned about. But they brought in a couple pass rushers to help them out, maybe to pressure the quarterback. But Tennessee, I think, has what it takes to have a really good season. They were right there as a, a dark horse contender in the SEC from last year. And I think they have a chance to really be solid once again on the offensive side of the football. I think they're going to be pretty explosive, as always. They've been explosive now for the last couple years. And Texas A&M here, this team's got a lot of talent. I mean, they're kind of similar to Miami. I know they're coming off a disappointing season. But this Texas A&M team, I think, is a dark horse contender. I really don't see anybody else, um, you know, getting in here as a dark horse contender. Maybe you put Ole Miss in there, but Texas A&M and Tennessee are both talented teams. Plus, these two teams play in the regular season. I do have Tennessee winning the matchup, but both of these teams just got so much talent. And also, I think they have what it takes to really challenge for that top spot in the SEC. Tennessee beat Alabama and LSU last year, and then Texas A&M um, obviously came close to beating Alabama. This year, they get them at home. So, yeah, both of these teams are definitely legitimate dark horse contenders for the college football playoff this year. And those are my top contenders slash dark horses for the SEC. Um, do I see any independent teams making it in this year? But I only have one of them. I have Notre Dame here as the only independent team that could probably make it in here into the college football playoff. I'm not saying they're a top contender. Maybe they're a dark horse contender, but this is the only independent team I really see getting in. Obviously, it's Notre Dame. They're a top, you know, program and everything. 
But this team, so much hype. Again, Sam Hartman coming over from uh, Wake Forest. I mean, I did have them also in my early, you know, projections and everything. That Notre Dame could probably be the only independent team that can probably make it in this year. And I'm still going to focus on that pick. But North, Notre Dame's got a tough schedule. They do have to play Ohio State and Clemson, and you know, on the schedule. And also USC out of the Pac-12. They play that team every year. So... Um, Notre Dame has a tough schedule. I think they have what it takes to probably make a playoff this year, but it will be a very tough path for them because of the schedule and everything. But Sam Hartman definitely gives them that help. I mean, he's got that experience from Wake Forest, but maybe this is not an explosive offense that we saw at Wake Forest because this is going to be a new system for Sam Hartman. But, I, again, Notre Dame is the only team out of the independent conference that I could probably see making it in. Now, how about group of five teams? Who I think out of the group of five makes it in uh, to the college football playoff this year as a top contender or dark horse contender? Well, I'm going to call them a dark horse contender this year, but that's going to be Tulane. Um, they're the only group of five team that – I could probably see making it into the college football playoff this year as a group of five team. Uh, this team went to a New Year's Six Bowl. I, had th I think you have to really include them in here, um, you know, in this top contender slash dark horses list. But right now I'm going to call them a dark horse contender. I mean, Tulane, like I said, coming off that New Year's Six Bowl win against USC. I think Tulane is the top group of five team heading into this year, maybe besides UTSA. I mean, I probably don't want to count them out. I probably could have put them here in this group of five list. But I think Tulane is the team that has a chance. I think they have a chance to make the playoff this year, but not saying they're going to. I just think they have a chance. So, I mean, we've seen a group of five team before make it in there a couple years ago with Cincinnati and everything. Tulane is probably that team that could probably really surprise the group of five teams this year. But I think this is going to be a pretty good Tulane team. A lot of production coming back, a lot of experience on this roster. And that's the only uh, group of five team that I think could possibly possibly make it in for the 2023 uh, slash 24 college football season. And those are my top contenders slash dark horses heading into 2023 slash 24 college football um, season. Um, I meant to change the thumbnail here, but that doesn't matter. Um, those are my top contenders slash top dark horses heading into 2023. Let me guys know what you think about these top contenders slash dark horses for the 2023 season. And stay tuned here for more sports content videos on my Lucas Ross sports channel.